And how you do, Buckaroos? No, I haven't lost my mind. No, I haven't gone to the dark side. I don't typically buy these products very often, but sometimes I, I get an idea. So, anyways, but I, um, <laughs> having some left here, I thought I'd do a video for this particular product. From the Miller Coors website, it says ingredients are water, barley malt, corn syrup, yeast, and hop extract. Sounds yummy. 4.6% from the actual High Life website. It says. We brew the Golden Pilsner with the yeast our founder brought over from Germany. Light, stable Galena hops from the Pacific Northwest. And a select combination of malt to barley. There's no reference to corn. <laughs> no reference. There is no reference to corn on that site, man. And it doesn't say hop extract either. So there you go. But yeah, I have a uh, kind of a mini Pilsner port here. Excuse me, my nose is still. So I want to be clear here. I'm not doing this video uh, to hammer the beer, nor am I going to exalt it. You don't need me to talk bad about it. There's enough. <laughs> There's enough craft beer reviewers out there that have already done that. You don't mean you don't need me to exalt it either, because there's enough wannabes that want to basically do commercials for these products that, that I will do that anyway. What I'm here is I'm just going to tell you what it has to offer since I had it. So the reason I have this beer, let me let me backtrack. If you haven't seen the previous video, excuse me while I scratch my nose, is um. The other day, I picked up a Lone Star. Uh, it was sixteen forty-eight for a twenty-four pack. I hadn't had it for quite some time, so I was curious. So, but having had that and, and drinking that, I was curious to see how it compared to the High Life and a Budweiser. So, I did a video, kind of looking at the differences between all three, not necessarily comparing. Comparing is a bad word, but it was just looking at or were there distinguishable, distinguishable quality and and taste differences between the three excuse me but having done that video i still had some left so i thought i'd talk about this beer a little bit uh growing up uh beer was a little bit different than it is now i mean the beers that are considered bargain beers uh, now were considered premium beers back then uh this being one of them uh, my dad drank only it was sold in a lot of bars back then uh uh, a lot in bottles, uh, uh, many on tap, although it's looked at kind of a bargain beer now, but it wasn't back then. It was on, on par with, well, Miller and, and Budweiser and Coors and whatever others you can think of that were available at that time. I do remember, though, my brother-in-law, who still drinks this to this day, even though I was a very young guy at the time, my brother-in-law always drank this and so did his brother. I don't know that this beer has changed much from then to now. My personal opinion is without having actual proof, I think it has changed. I don't think it is the same beer now that it was in, in the mid 80s. But, uh, you know, I think it has changed so gradually over time that I think a lot of folks just didn't know the difference and they've gotten used to drinking this. It's the same way with food. I mean, you know, we eat so much bulk fast food that we've begun to think that certain food chains are actually giving you good food when it really isn't, you know. I mean, let's be honest, look at all the big burger fast food chains. I don't know if any of them are actually giving you beef because uh, it, it's cheaper for them to tell you they're serving you 100% beef and pay the fine for lying to you than it is for them to actually serve you 100% beef. And that is what's wrong with our society. Yeah, but but it, I, again, I'm talking about the gradual dumbing down of palace between beer and food. It's, it's been the same thing. That's why it, it was, for me anyway, that's what I think is great about the craft beer revolution. Because it, it now allows us to understand beer the way it was meant to be. We can, we, if, if you like beers like this, fine. But you can actually find actual... To, <laughs> You know, honest to God beer right now, you know, so that's nice. For me, again, I I, I don't typically drink beers like this. I don't typically buy them, but I, I was curious. And, and uh, you know, there are, I have personal reasons why I don't 
you know, say wonderful things about Miller Coors or AB InBev. I, but I'm not going to get into those differences right now. They don't really matter in the scope of this video. I just want to talk about this particular beer. Yeah, you know, again, it depends on flavors, what you like, what you don't like. I, I prefer an honest-to-goodness Pilsner, uh, you know, one that doesn't contain corn extract, <laughs> One that actually, uh, one that doesn't contain corn syrup, what I meant to say, and one that uses hops as opposed to hop extract. But if this is the flavor you enjoy, you enjoy. My issue with a lot of folks is, is there are beer reviewers out there that want to tell you that this is as good as, well, it's not, you know, I mean, you know, they're, they're handing you a cracker with a sardine on it telling you it's sushi, you know. You know, they're handing you a Vienna sausage and telling you it's a gourmet sausage. It's not. Now, if you like them, that's fine. But but, you know, but but don't say it's good or it's quality because it's not. And the problem with those folks is, is, in my opinion, for me anyway, there's a lot of people I don't watch anymore because they've lost all credibility. If you're giving certain, certain beer, certain things, you know, a, a, an A-plus grade, when, when it's clearly obvious that it's not, you know, your integrity is in question because you've got so many folks out there just trying to get free beer. They're doing commercials for products like this so they can get in good with Miller Coors. They're doing, you know, they're, they'll say wonderful things about various products, so AB and Bear will send them things. Now, let, let's be honest, folks. These guys aren't beer reviewers. They're pitchmen. You know, that's all they are at this point, you know. And you can admit it, or you 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 could not. I actually, you know, I mean, I think those guys have lost integrity, in my opinion. But I'd respect them more if they were honest about it. But you have guys that will will shamelessly beg for beer and brag about people giving them free beer. It's oh no, I didn't ask for it. These guys just don't contact you out of the freaking blue and offer you beer. That's not how it works, folks. I mean, I'm not necessarily a world traveler. I don't claim to be, but I've talked to enough brewery owners to know. That's not how the system works, my friends. You have to contact them. You have to ask them for it. And then they, you know, if they feel you worthy, they will give it to you. But don't say, hey, no, I'm, I'm honest. No, no, you, you're, you're not honest. Your integrity is questionable. You're not a beer reviewer. You're, you're, you're a pitch man at this point. So there you go. See, I'm not, I told you I wasn't going to do a review for this beer. <laughs> I just like to have a beer and have a conversation, man. <laughs> whether you want to hear it or not. Ah, oh, so there you go. I don't know that I have much more to say on that subject. I'm going to get that Bud Watch out and finish it up. I got to tell you, the, the very first glass I had of this when it was at its coldest, I didn't necessarily hate it, but as it warms, it does become harder to drink, and that's the problem with these adjunct lagers, is that the inferior ingredients uh, do kind of you know, they, they, they kind of weigh on you. You know, if you're drinking a, a quality beer, it, you know, it, it, even if I have, say, um, well, you know, any craft Pilsner, to be honest with you, uh, if, if it warms, it, it's still going to taste crisp at, at the end, even after 20, 25 minutes. But a beer like this after 10, it isn't quite the same anymore. But again, I mean, uh, I guess I did drag a little bit. I didn't mean to badmouth the beer. Now, again, it just depends on what you like. This is the type of beer you like. I mean, I don't hammer my brother in law for drinking this. It's what he likes to drink. He enjoys it. I don't care. It's 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 affordable for him. So he, you know, it's, it's the beer he likes to drink. For me, I I like a quality beer. But when I'm at his house and he offers a beer up, sure, I'll have a beer with him. I'm not a snob, but uh, but it doesn't mean I, I <laughs> doesn't mean I don't know what, what what tastes good and what doesn't. You know what I'm saying? I mean. There are times I, you know, a situation being what it is and food choices being limited, I'll, I'll have a Big Mac. Doesn't mean I think it's a quality of hamburger because I'd rather have something else. But sometimes that's what's available. And, and quite frankly, sometimes that flavor hits a spot, as with a beer like this. I didn't mean to talk bad about it, Miller. Sorry about that. But, you know, for me, I am a quality beer guy. But I will admit that there are, there are times when a beer like this hits the spot. Now I've said all I have to say. I'm going to Beer Whisperer. We'll talk to you later.